Okay, so I'm here with Gwen and Sam of Runaway Parade Games, and we were just checking out Fire Tower. This is an awesome game here in the Unpub room. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about how this game works here? Huh? Yeah, uh, basically, do uh, you want me to go? Yeah. Yeah, um, go for it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a two to four player competitive firefighting game. And uh, most firefighting games, uh, if you've ever played one, uh, not everyone has, I always assume everyone has, uh, have a cooperative aspect where you're trying to work together to contain the flames in the center and beat back the inferno. But in Fire Tower, it's a completely competitive firefighting game to the point where your only objectives are one, to defend yourself, and two, spread the fire from the center of the board towards your opponents and breach their tower, hit their back corner and burn them down and take their cards and then continue your assault against the rest of the board. So the way that fire spreads in this game is pretty awesome awesome how you end up setting up based off of the wind which is on this dial over here uh, a way that the fire is going to spread on each and every turn occasionally the wind is going to change based off of cards and we just got done playing this thing and it, it was awesome to make sure that the fire was going in just the right direction until it of course explodes and then everything gets way out of control so what was kind of the the inspiration or the thought process behind some of the creation of this game? Well, we have played a bunch of games about, you know, different topics and we wanted to come up with something that had a natural mechanic in it that would, you know, sort of make the game on its own. So, a lot of these co-op games, and there's co-op games about firefighting and any other, like, you know, pandemic has disease, is something that's growing on its own, but what about a competitive game that also had that mechanic, like a growing fire for example so we have the growing fire that's growing because of the wind and you can't stop it but then you're also still trying to push it along and get your opponents with it yeah i mean i guess when it came down to it yeah we, like Brian was saying we wanted something that grew organically and we wanted to feel like you were fighting the board along with other players at the same time and we, we spent a long time like searching for that theme and then a fire really seemed to fit that uh, the best after you know going through a whole bunch of ideas Totally. Well, if I could distill this into like my favorite concepts of the game, first off, the, the component quality is off the chain. Like these components are amazing. These little fire pieces, they feel awesome in your hands and look even cooler when you have a whole host of them spread into the different areas on the board. These are amazing. Then the other thing about this game, mechanic-wise, is that it really does get out of control. Like you start forming a, a little bit of a strategy and you can totally influence this fire, but it works thematically and mechanically very tight to make sure that you can't predict everything that's going to happen. And the last thing that I think is really cool about this game is uh, even though it's you know a, a 30 or so minute game, you found ways of, of skirting some of the maybe some of the things that people don't like about player elimination games. Why don't yeah. we talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, like a, a lot of what we've done trying to balance the game is that if you know if someone is knocked out, we don't want someone sitting on the sidelines just like kind of like waiting and uh, losing interest in the action. It resolves itself and there's cards, uh, we have a card called the Firestorm uh, that comes up once for the deck and ratchets it up also when someone dies. And the Firestorm, uh, as soon as it happens, when someone's eliminated, their revenge is they get the spin uh, the wind dial in whatever direction it lands, let's say west, every single token that can then populate to the west will go that way. So as people go out, uh, they also play with an extra card in their hand, so it becomes harder and harder to survive in the game as it goes on. So, so essentially we accelerate the game every se time someone's eliminated and inevitably the game ends within a few turns. It's also a really fast paced game, so we just want to make sure people aren't sitting around, you know, sort of weeping into their drink that they just lost. <laughs> There's a ton of ways that you can interact with the board, you can be aggressive, you can be defensive, you can set up barriers here. The cards themselves allow you to either get rid of fire, add more fire, or change the wind. There is a lot of really interesting stuff going on in this game, and it is one of the most interesting games that we've had a chance to check out in the Unpub room. So thank you guys for talking to me about this game. Are you guys kickstarting this, or, or what's the plans for uh, Fire Tower? We're yeah. 
planning on kickstarting it early next year, hopefully somewhere between January and March. We don't have an exact date yet, but um, yeah, really looking forward to getting it out there and getting it in the hands of everybody. So. And yeah. where can people find more about this game and Runaway Parade games and you two awesome people? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you can just go to our website, uh, runawayparade.com, and then everything about the game is there. There's a whole tab for the game and uh, our bios and just how, you know, we ended up uh, creating our first game together. Yeah, and you can also find us on Board Game Geek, Facebook, Twitter, Runaway Parade Games. Thank you guys so much. Hey, no Thank problem. you. Thank okay, you. Thanks so much. All right.